I know what you're doing. I'm stop it. Don't do this. I swear, I think Hold your on jacket is upside no, down. Stop it. I know what you're doing. Welcome back to Bravo Breaking News with Kim and Lisa. So this week on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the weed dinner party from hell continues. And just when we thought Sutton was acting unhinged, Denise Richards enters the chat. I don't know what she was on. It was definitely more than just weed, but I'll have what she's having. We're going to get into Denise's upside down jacket, Sutton's low blows, and the return of the iconic Kim Richards, our personal friend, Kim Richards, might I add. So guys, we have so much to discuss and we're going to get into everything. Before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Bravo breaking news. And I just wanted to shout out that Bravo Breaking News is on Etsy. We have so much holiday merch for all of your gifting needs. We've got sweaters. We've got mugs. We've got ornaments. We've got so many gifts for you and your fellow Bravo lovers. So please check out the shop at the link below in the video description. Okay, so we pick back up at this weed party, which maybe only four out of the 10 ladies are participating in the the THC food, but we're going to roll with it. And they, you know, again, they're talking about Kyle's wedding man and that whole thing. And Kyle kind of says, you know, the reason I'm not drinking is because it makes me feel depressed and I can't afford to feel depressed right now. So I think with that comment, she really is kind of letting them in on something. And I think it's for me, it's like Sutton, at this point, if you are her true friend, you stop pushing. Right. And even Faye says, you know, I don't think a true friend would ask like that. Impl- saying that Sutton, the way she's going about talking to Kyle and asking if there's something going on is all wrong. And I completely agree. So Kyle kind of shares, you know, she's had conversations with the ladies about her marriage not being great at the retreat in episode one. And she confides in people who are closer to her like Faye. So Sutton finally kind of starts to back down a little bit. And she said, you know, she apologizes for the name And then she apologizes for Kyle's part in it, too. So Kyle's like, "Okay, thanks for apologizing on my behalf, I guess. I don't know. It was just kind of weird the way she she doesn't really seem like she's sorry. I'll put it that way. No, I mean, this is far from over. That apology was not genuine in the least. I mean, it continues after the dinner. We'll get to that in a second. But we hear a little bit from Garcelle. She talks about her experience with her ex cheating on her and how he bought her jewelry after to make up for it. And it's really insane to learn more about this side of Garcelle. You know, we know that she like emailed her entire friends and family list to let them know about this affair and kind of out her husband, which is such a boss move, such a boss move. But then we kind of have all of the ladies chiming in about you know, their relationship statuses. You know, of course, we know Cynthia Bailey, RIP Chill. You know, she is no longer with Mike Hill. But she's basically like, I don't need a man. And I love that for Cynthia. She's living her best life. Erica, however, feels a little differently. You know, she it doesn't really seem like she is loving the single life. It seems like she wants to find a man. It kind of seems like she's a hopeless romantic. She wants like that romance that's from the movies. And then she shares something. She's like, I don't need them to be rich, you know, and we have Justin Sylvester giving the side eye. Like, excuse me? Like, are you sure you don't need them to be rich? Because I'm pretty sure she does. I think, you know, she's just saying this to to say. Yeah, I was actually surprised to hear this hopeless romantic side of Erica because it seems like she has lived a life, right? And she feels like she would be too hardened to even believe that that could ever happen. But hey, you know, I guess at the end of the day, she's just like us, all of us girls. That's what we see in the movies. And that's what we want is this love that just completely, you know, envelops you and makes you giddy. And that's what she wants. So Dorit kind of shifts the conversation to Denise. And she says, Denise, how is it back being with the group? And Okay, this is when it kind of starts to go off the rails because Denise is basically like, it's great, except for Erica. I need to talk to you about something. And Erica is a little bit caught off guard. Okay. and But Denise doesn't say what she has to talk to her about. She just says, when we first met, you were so nice to me. And then it wasn't like that. And Erica doesn't follow what she, where she's going. She has no idea what road she's on. No one, there's no entrance to this freeway, okay? 
everyone else is kind of sitting around confused and Denise keeps talking, but she's not saying anything. Let me be very clear, but she doesn't say anything clear. So it is just on another another level. Erica is sitting there like, look, I know I'm high, but I have no idea what the fuck she's talking about. And we were all Erica in that moment. And I had to go back and check because I thought Denise ordered zero milligrams of THC. I did confirm that. She did not order any THC. She says she has a bad cold. So maybe she took some cough medicine with codeine or something and it was making her loopy. But there was something going on there. And I, it was hilarious to watch. You know what I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> it was insane. And Erica's just like, the whole table is just sitting there wide-eyed watching this go down. Erica's asking, no one knows what you're talking about, Denise. Literally not one person. She's like, you know, please tell me what I did. Watch the show. Go watch the show and come back. Watch the show. That's the example. And everybody's still like, like, I wish the editors would have just added like a million question marks just everywhere. Like, what? Excuse me, what? Like, what are you talking about? Just say it. It's almost like Sutton, but different, right. you know, same but different. Just say it. She won't fucking say it. But I think it's because Denise is not in her right mind at this moment. But Erica stays cool as a cucumber, you know, like she's just she's like, I'm sitting there. I'm high. She's ruining my high. But I'm just going to sit here and take it because it's Denise Richards. And Erica finally decides to just say, look, Denise, I'm sorry. I apologize. Then we get the thank you. You're welcome. Then Denise, <laughs> like what? I I don't understand. What is she on? She has to be on. I have to rewind. I had to rewind and watch it again because I was like, did she just thank herself, say thank you, and you're welcome in the same sentence? And yep, she sure did. She has zero milligrams of THC. She had to have had a roadie on the way there. We know she loves that Casamigos Blanco. So maybe she had one, two three of those, maybe mixed with the cough medicine because she's sick. I don't know. Maybe it's mixing the meds with the alcohol. I don't know. But something is crazy. The ladies aren't the only one that notices it. The chef notices it, walks back into the kitchen and goes, <laughs> man, Denise Richards is fucked up. And it is just hilarious. Imagine being that guy. Imagine being that guy. This is already a crazy situation to be in. But to witness that, insane. And then just when we think it cannot get any more crazy, Sutton pulls out a joint from her purse and lights it at the dinner table. I did not have that on my bingo card, okay? Because she ordered zero milligrams of THC. Like, I went back and checked. And then all of a sudden, she sparks up a joint inside Kyle's house at the dinner table. Like, that is Seth Rogen's level stoner behavior, Okay. I did not expect that from Sutton. No one did. But to smoke inside, I thought that was very strange. And they didn't show her asking Kyle. I'm sure maybe she did. I don't know. But it was so weird. And Crystal pointed out, you know, okay, so you can't handle some half naked men on stage, you know, simulating oral sex, but you spark up a joint at a elegant dinner party. It was just she's a walking contradiction in Crystal's in Crystal's words. And I, can I just say, though, that poor chef, because first of all, he had to wait for Kyle and Sutton to finish their conversation, right? So he had to keep the dinner hot, but not, you know, not bring it out yet. And then he had to deal with Denise saying, like, are you single? Okay. And then, you know, all of this is going on. He doesn't want to interrupt their conversation by bringing out food. I mean, that poor guy was probably sweating just trying to figure out the timing of everything. It was so amazing. It was so amazing. And it didn't end at the dinner. Oh, no, 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 no. So they start to get up and Denise, you know, gets up and she walks away with Kyle and starts just like doing this pointing thing across the stairway and no one knows what's happening. And then Dorit, oh my God, bless Dorit's heart. She goes up to Denise very quietly, not trying to make a scene, saying, honey, I think your jacket is on upside down. And Denise says, what? Don't do this. I know what you're doing. Don't do this. No. Dorit says, no, honey, your jacket, 
it's it's upside down. Yeah, no, Denise takes this as an attack. She is she thinks Dorit is coming for her. Don't. Don't do this. I know what you're doing. Do not do this. And Dorit's like, seriously, no, your entire jacket is upside down. I don't give a flying fuck about my jacket. And, you know, Dorit's like, whoa, like, you know, take it down or not. She's being very quiet. Like, she was not trying to confront Denise in any way, shape, or form. She was just trying to say, hey, no. you know what? Hey, I, I think your jacket's upside down. You know, why don't, why don't you fix it? Like, the little is- girl, like, you see a girl, you know, walking out of the bathroom with toilet paper on her shoe. It's like, oh, hey, honey, you got something on your shoe. It was that vibe. Hey, Denise, like, your jacket's on upside down. Like, just flip it around. Or, you know, oh, your tag is still on. Let me just tuck that back in. She was just don't. trying to do her a solid. Don't. Don't do this. Don't. Don't. Don't you dare. She, she was so offended by this. She, you know, Dorit's like, you know, are you okay? Like, and then like pretty much she, Denise just leaves right after that. Like it is, she is not okay. Things are not okay. It was kind of scary to watch because everybody, even that scene in the stairwell, you know, she's like, what is going on? (laughs) Kyle is just like, what is going on? She looks over at Sutton. It is, it is unhinged, but we can laugh about it. You know, there was nothing malicious. You know, she came after Erica, but, you know, they did make up. It's just going to be such an iconic scene that we quote and remember forever. Uh, another dinner party going down in history. And I love that the, the best dinner parties are always in someone's home. You know, sure, we have fights when we're out at restaurants all the time. Those are a dime a dozen. But the real ones, the ones that stick with us forever in our hearts, are the dinner parties that happen inside someone's home. Camille Grammer's home. Kathy Hilton's home with the, or what? Or what? And now Kyle's home. I just, I love it so much. Okay, Dorit kind of checks in on Kyle and tells her that Sutton made the comment, Kyle must be in denial about something somewhere. And so immediately Kyle turns and confronts Sutton and said, Sutton, what am I in denial about? And Sutton, you know, plays, I don't know. Why don't you tell us? I don't know anything. And it's just back to this, you know, fucking hamster wheel that we're on with, what do you know? I know something. I don't know anything. Nothing's going on. Something's going on. And I'm just like, I'm over it at this point. Kyle finally walks away. And, you know, she's just, she knows she can't, she's not going to get anywhere tonight with Sutton. Yeah, and I am so on Kyle's side with this one because she keeps saying, I told you guys at the retreat. Right. Like, what's going on with your marriage? What's going on with your marriage? And Kyle's like, I already told you. I told you you're going through a challenging time. It's been a rough year. And that's that. I I really don't think there's much more for Kyle to say at this point. She said it over and over again. And I don't know what Sutton's trying to dig up. But right. I think that's it. It was kind of crazy. And then we start talking about Sutton's esophagus disorder because Kyle, kind of rightfully so, is turning it back on Sutton and being like, well, if you're going to accuse me of having a drinking problem, being the reason why I quit drinking, then why don't we talk about your eating, which is a little questionable, but hey, tit for tat at this point. And Sutton's like, I have an esophagus disorder. I can't eat certain foods. And and now we're just like, okay, now there's an esophagus disorder involved in all of this. And then like Sutton goes even lower, lower than she's ever gone and says, you've already lost two sisters. Do you want to lose a third? And I'm with Kyle. Go fuck yourself, Sutton. Why would you? That was not okay. That? I mean, the, you know the trouble that these sisters have had for years and years. They've had ups. They've had down. And to... Shoot them when they are down, especially Kyle not being in a good place with Kathy at this point is the lowest of lows that you can go. Yeah, that was not okay. And I don't mean to laugh about the esophagus disorder, but just the way it came out. I'm sorry, the delivery was funny. It was like, you know, I have an esophagus problem. And it just sounded so absurd. But yeah, I I think I think Sutton went too low with that one. And 
everyone kind of, that's a little bit too far there, Sutton. The party disperses at this point, right? And I think it's it's probably time to call it a night here. So, okay, we move on to the next day. We see Kyle run into Anne Marie's. We're starting to get to know Anne Marie a little bit better, but I think, you know, there's so much else going on with this episode that it's like, it, now is not really the time to get to know a new housewife. I feel like I just want to be in this drama. And then simultaneously, we see Garcelle Sutton and Crystal go to lunch. And then Denise shows up also. And Denise looks, you know, much fresher than she did from the night before. And they say it's the night before. I don't who knows. This could be a week later. But, you know, they're kind of recapping and they're kind of trying to explain to Denise that, you know, no one really knew what you were talking about. And so Denise kind of reveals that she was talking about the time at her barbecue when Erica was talking about threesomes and her kids were sitting at the other table. And I thought to myself, that was so long ago. I remember Erica apologizing for that to Denise one-on-one. Why is she still holding on to that? I thought the same thing. I thought that was several years ago. Like, when she said that was the reason, I was like, what? Excuse me? Like, ha- we've, we've been there. We've done that. I-, I thought it had something to do with Lisa Rinna. I thought it had something to do with the Lisa Rinna of it all, seeing as Erica was so close with Lisa, sided with Lisa about everything for the past few years. Um, so for it to still be about that is a little weird. But I was very happy to see Denise be a normal human again. You know, that yes. really, you know, grounded me and made me be like, okay, things are good. Things are good. She just maybe had one too many that night. But we end the episode with an iconic cameo with the one and only Kim Richards. I was so happy to see her. You know, we did see videos and spoilers of this scene several months ago when they filmed. But so Kyle and Dorit go hiking and they invite Kim along for the ride. And I love that her and Kyle are are good right now. Mm-hmm. You know, we catch up with Kim. We learn, you know, all about her new grandbabies. They kind of share that she, during lockdown, she basically didn't leave her house. So she has taken up drawing, painting, doing murals. And she is just such a creative soul. I love to see her channeling this. But, you know, it kind of, the conversation shifts and they kind of start talking about family stuff. You know, they start talking about Phoenix, Paris's son, and the fact that Kim has met him, Kyle has not. And she actually found out about the birth on Instagram, which has to be super, super rough and, and hit hit Kyle hard. But we know that at this point, her and Kathy are still not on good terms. And it's really sad to hear Kim just wants to bring them back together. And she basically says life's too short. Yeah, I think... I thought about it, and it's definitely kind of weird to hear about a birth like that through Instagram. However, if you watch Paris in Love, you learn that literally no one knew about this baby except for Paris and her husband. She didn't even tell her mom. She didn't tell her sister. She didn't tell her team. So it was kind of a surprise for everyone. And then even after he was born, they still kept it under wraps for a couple weeks. So, you know, I I wasn't... I feel like it was a little bit different just in that situation. But I do love where Kim's coming from. And she's saying, you know, life's too short. I just really want you guys to fix this. I want you to find a way to fix this. Because, and she's right. You never know. You could be here one day day and gone the next. And you just don't want to have that conflict in your life, especially with people who you love. And like deep down, they're sisters. I know they have love for each other. And so, you know, Kim just wants to bring them back together. And I hope that she can be that bridge. I mean, Kim is kind of the glue that's holding them together. You know, she is the middleman and that's a lot of pressure to have on you. But as we know now, Kyle and Kathy are in a good place. And I think we have Kim to thank for that. So I don't know. I hope we get to see more of Kim. I think we do get to see more of Kim this season, maybe even next episode. So I'm really looking forward to that. We need the sisters on our screen. I need more Denise Richards, too, because those unhinged moments are just, you can't beat them. So, I mean, imagine, so Denise herself was unhinged. Imagine if Aaron had been there talking about 5G, to just throw that into the mix. I know, I know. And it just goes to show they're perfect for each other. I mean, (laughs) you know, 
there's no question in my mind. So we will be back next week to cover yet another episode of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. There is a lot more drama to come, so make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss anything. I'm loving this season, so keep watching. Thanks, everyone. Bye.